Today we're going to learn how to make game boards. Making a prototype game board can be super easy or it can be a little harder if you want something that's better looking and more durable. Uh, I use a lot of different techniques and in this video I'm just going to go real quick through some of them. This is the board from Young Jacob Marley. It's designed to fit on exactly one page so you can print it on plain paper and just use this. Um, I've also got a second copy of it here that's on cardstock. That's a 110 pound index and I went ahead and trimmed the edges off of this so it looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, but both of these were super easy to print and uh, that is often all you need to do. For these fish cook boards, I'm going a little sturdier than index. I'm going to take full sheet labels and I'm going to stick them on chipboard. In this case, it's chipboard that I stole out of a cereal box. Full sheet labels typically have multi-section backing paper, so you can peel off just a little bit of it. You can line up the non-sticky part, stick down the sticky part, and then peel off the rest of your labels. That'll make sure you got your labels stuck on exactly where you want them. Now I left the labels and the cardstock untrimmed when I stuck these together so that I could make one cut and clean it up at the very end. For a slightly prettier edge, you can wrap the label around the cardstock. So I'm still doing labels on cardstock here, but in this case I'm wrapping the label around to the back so that the edge has color and not just a plain white. For this cardstock, I'm using some artist's drawing paper, which is still a little heavier than that chipboard from the cereal box. In this case, I'm trimming the core, I'm trimming the cardstock to the right size of the finished board, but I'm still leaving the label big. I'm going to mark the corners of the board on the label. I'm going to cut in at those corners a little bit wider than 90 degrees and then I'll have tabs basically that wrap around the edges of that core and give me a nice clean edge all the way around the board. Here I'm using a piece of scotch tape to clamp the label to the core so that it doesn't slide around while I'm peeling off the backing sheet. This technique is actually kind of fun and it gives you a better looking edge than just trimming it after you stuck it down. This spree board is two pages and so we're going to print each one separately and then we're going to connect them using packing tape on the back. Again, I only cut when I have to, so the outside edges I'm leaving raw but I'm cutting the clean line down the middle so that I can line up these two pages. I'm connecting them on the front with a little bit of scotch tape. I'm going to take that back off after I've got the hinge built, but I just used the scotch tape to keep the pieces together. I'm using three strips of packing tape for this hinge. I use one long piece for the hinge itself, and then I reinforce it at both ends with another short piece that goes across. Now the board's all taped together, I'm going to trim the outside edge so that it's a nice clean line all the way around. If you want a board that's a little more durable, you can cover it with contact paper. That's what I've done with this one piece tack board. Contact paper is adhesive paper. It's for protecting drawers or cabinets. And the kind that I'm using is perfectly clear, but it does have a gridded backing sheet so I can cut it straight and get it the right size. I taped this piece of contact paper to my work surface because it keeps curling up and going crazy on me. So I taped the corners down so it wouldn't get away from me. I'm putting down the board one edge first and then I'm going to curl it slightly so I can press as much air out of there as I can. Just like with the label, I'm going to trim these corners out to a little wider than 90 degrees so that when they wrap around they won't interfere with each other. Then wrap the edges nice and tight and you've got yourself a, a nice covered board. 
This is not 100% waterproof. The water can still get in the corners and on the back, obviously, but it'll certainly stand up to a lot of spills, a lot more abuse than just the printed paper would. On this Jacob Marley board, I wanted to fold it in half. I'm gonna use the contact paper on the front to form the hinge that keeps the thing together in the box. This Jacob Marley board is a single sheet to start with. I'm gonna trim the edges and then find the center. And once again, I'm cutting a sheet of contact paper that's about two inches bigger all the way around. I'm using a little bit of scotch tape on the back to hold these board sections together while I stick them to the contact paper. And then that little bit of scotch tape is gonna come off again. Now I'm cutting out the corners of the contact paper so I can wrap it around the back. And I'm also splitting it at the seam where it's gonna to have to break on that fold. And here's the final board with its uh, contact paper hinge. This is a four piece board. It's the prototype board from the Island of Dr. Lucky. And the way we're gonna do this is a forward seam on the top and the bottom and then a back seam on the side, but only on one half of it. So you see we've got one open seam here, two forward seams that I've done with contact paper, and then a seam on the back with tape that lets it fold into quarters like that. I'm gonna mount each quadrant on a separate board and I'm only gonna trim off the waist where I need to right before I make a seam. Uh, unlike the Jacob Marley board, I'm not wrapping this, I'm just trimming it off. So the contact paper doesn't wrap around the edges here, but you could do that. And then for the middle seam, I can only tape half of it, but I'm gonna use that same letter I seam, one long piece and two cross pieces for a nice sturdy hinge on the part of the board that I can tape together. You can make even bigger boards with more complicated folds. The trick is just to alternate between forward and backward seams, and they can all compress together like this. So that's most of the techniques that I use to make prototype game boards. I hope this has been helpful to you and uh, thanks for watching. Okay, so what's this? It's, it's a cheap ass jar. You, you put money in it and then you send it to cheap ass games. Okay, that makes sense. So you get your friends to come over and play cheap ass games, and if they like them, you get put money in the jar, and then when there's enough, you send it in. Makes yep. sense. Mm -hmm.